As we say, the uncertainty over who will be president has had everything to do with the market's performance of late, according to Chris Castaldo of StockTradersPress.com. Well, I think any prolonged political decision of who's going to run the uh, presidency for the next term, uh, I think it's going to put downward pressure on the market. We're seeing the NASDAQ Hoover right around the 3,000 point, which is uh, mentally a very powerful point. If we drop below that, that level, I think the NASDAQ could drop another 5 or 10 percent. I think what we're seeing on the Dow Jones is we've had a strong run up in the last three weeks. We've almost seen the Dow Jones advanced uh, about 1,000 points. And what we're starting to do is give back that 1,000 points that we've gained over the last three weeks. Castaldo is still hopeful that a reasonable process in the presidential election will calm the markets. Auction With many e-businesses in turmoil after a year-long downturn in speculative tech stocks, the challenge for the surviving e-tailers is how to win over the investor and customer base. Chris Castaldo says when investing online, the company you choose to trade with will really depend on what type of investor you are. How often do you trade? Do you like to trade uh, limit orders? Would you like to use market orders? Some firms don't let you trade before hours, and some let you trade after hours when the regular market closes. Um, E-Trade just instituted a new rule. If your account is dormant for one month and do no transactions, they hit your account with a $15 monthly service fee, very much like a bank would charge you if you don't carry a minimum balance in your checking. So I think if you look at these options, you've got a lot of choices to make, but it really depends on what type of investor you are. Staldo adds his firm specializes in offering unbiased opinions of stock choices. Welcome back. The Federal Reserve has cut interest rates for a record 11 times this year, but will that help the economy? Chris Castaldo from StockTradersPress.com joins us this morning. Hello, Chris. How are you good, doing? Good morning. How are you today? Happy Thanks holidays for to you. Back. Thank you. A um, couple of bad stocks from the last <laughs> year. Let's hit those before you give us advice. Well, you know, th this, is, this has been a pretty difficult year, and I think most people would kind of look right now and say Enron has done poorly, but I'd rather not talk about that. I'd like to talk about a sector in particular that would might, you know, typify what's going on with the overall economy. Mm -hmm. And I would kind of look at like a Providian Financial, and they do subprime credit card lending. And we've had a really good joyride, and we've had a lot of parties and a lot of conspicuous consumption. And when the party was over, pe people had to pay for these credit card bills. And most of these people, they could cards through pretty, uh, Providian. They're not the most right. responsible people in the world. So when the bills did come in, uh, the company was stuck with a lot of unpaid credit cards. So the stock really got hit, and they went from 60 70 down to about $3 a share. So I think that would typify the overall economy. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't have the discretionary money that they had, you know, two years ago. So what do you learn from 2001 as we branch off now into 2002 uh, in terms of places to invest your money? Well, you know, I'm looking at the, 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 the market in general and our economy is getting a little older. You see a lot of people walking around with a bit more gray hairs and a bit more experience. And I would kind of start with the top and look at the pharmaceutical stocks. I mean, the states are coming under a tremendous amount of fiscal pressure. And what they've done is they've put, in, put the reins on, I'd say, uh, the doctors, the medical groups for kind of uh, uh, abusing their claims and whatnot. But what they haven't done is really focused on the pharmaceuticals. And these are high PE stocks. They trade at large multiples. And they pretty much create create their own profit margins because drugs are very expensive. So I think going forward, uh, the clamps are going to come down on them. R&D prices are skyrocketing. So I think when the states, you know, fit the, uh, foot the bill for the pharmaceuticals, I think they're, uh, they're postured for some negative surprise in the future. What stocks do we need to be watching out for specifically? Well, I think that's a great question. And, you know, when I look at the market, I tend to view through the windshield a little bit more than, uh, you know, the mirror behind me. And, you know, what I think might be going forward is, the market is, I'd say, confusion right now. People have caution, and as the inventories get a little better, as the unemployment gets a little better, people are going to have a lot more uh, you know, positive uh, feeling about the stock market, and they're going to be a lot more confident. I like the storage sector. We are in an information technology, and I think if you're going to look at uh, storage, you have to go with an industry leader such as EMC. Mm -hmm. uh, they've just signed an incredible, very brilliant relationship with Dell Computer. Uh, Dell Computer has said they were going to sell PCs. They did it. They said they were going to sell servers. Now they're going to sell storage with EMC, and I think that's a beautiful marriage. So um, another stock I might really be attracted to is Quest Communications. Mm -hmm. um, the stock is $12 a share. Um, what they do is basically provide that last mile of service. So they've got over 18 million subscriber lines out there, kind of going to businesses, going to consumers. So I think uh, with a book value of $22, the stock is trading at 12 So you know, I'll buy a, a dollar for 50 cents right now. So I, right. I think they're postured for a 50 to 100% move on the upside. 
Is that near its 52-week low? It's yeah. right off its 52-week low, and it's got a high of 48. So at $12, I mean, I think it's a no-brainer here. All huh. right. Chris Cataldo, happy holidays, pal. Thank you Love very much. Love to pick your brain. Thanks so much. Thanks. There's much more ahead on Eyewitness News. It's Sunday morning. Stay with us. A little bit about Kmart. Kmart's bankruptcy has a lot of people on Wall Street wondering if the retailer is another Enron. Of course, there's so many questions about accounting these days. Joining us now with his take is Chris Costaldo. He's president and CEO of StrockTradersPress.com. Uh, Randy Smith from the Wall Street Journal is with me as well, so we'll sort of make this a, a three-way chat here. First of all, um, what exactly is Stock Traders Press? I'm not too familiar with it. I have it on my screen for the first time. Uh, we're an independent, unbiased research firm, and uh, we provide uh, you know insightful you know, research research to people who want to trade online. I mean, it's been a big switch to people who don't want to deal with stockbrokers anymore for one reason or the other. They trade online, but they don't have time to research the equity. So uh, we do that work for them. Mm -hmm. I, I, as I said, I have your website up here, and I see that you list on that site that you're going to be talking about. Kmart here today with us. Um, you're going to be talking about Kmart on. Uh, ABC Eyewitness News, and you already commented on LA Opinion, another um, show, I guess. Do you own Kmart? Uh, yes, we do have a, a small position in Kmart. What's uh, define a small position? Um, well, that's proprietary, but we do own the stock at higher levels. You know, at four dollars a share, three dollars a share, two dollars a share, one dollar a share. So we've been buying the stock here. We do believe that give it some time, this could be you know a six or an eight dollar stock. You know, back in 1996, they did have some problems. Problems. They almost went bankrupt, and at four and a half dollars a share, it did take the company about 27 months, but they got back to 24. I'm not so aggressive on it now, but I think people are playing the stock wrong and there's a lot more value here Don't than you, you see with Enron. I mean, most bankruptcies, the equity holders get completely wiped out. Now, why is it going to be different here? Well, I, I agree with you in, in most cases, but people aren't really looking below the surface. I mean, people are very much so oversensitized because of what's happening with Enron. If you compare Enron with Kmart, I think it's apples and oranges. Enron was basically a trading firm. They had not that many assets, and they just stood between a buyer and seller and took a commission. If you look at Kmart, they've got $37 billion in revenues, 2100 locations. Locations. They've got 250,000 employees, so there's some meat on the bone there. So they've been through a challenging retail environment, to say the best, uh, to say the least. Um, they. They, they need to put together an aggressive restructuring plan, which I think they are starting to put together. They will be closing quite a few stores that are underperforming. And, you know, I, I think if you really look, I think they will pull this one off as they have in what, the past. What makes you think the debt holders would get paid anywhere near 100 cents on the dollar so that there would be any left over for the equity holders? How, how big is the debt? Well, yesterday, I mean, this is a very important stride. And they've only been in bankruptcy a week, but the, uh, the bankruptcy court will allow Kmart to back out of 350 previously closed stores. I mean, it's stated that Kmart's going to lose approximately $50 million this year. All right, um, That might be about you know 10 to 20 cents a share. Um, just by closing these 350 locations without any recourse by the real estate uh, companies, that's going to save Kmart $250 million. So it could be argued just on that fact alone that this could move the company back to a smaller Kmart but a profitable streamlined Kmart. Chris Costaldo is with StockTradersPress.com, and you um, admittedly own Kmart. I yes. thank you for coming in and giving us your uh, your views on it. Thank you very much. Take care. Up next, President Bush. The pictures of the devastation from Katrina are frightening, but they don't tell the whole story. The financial fallout of that storm will be felt nationwide. Christopher Castaldo is a financial analyst with StockTrader, uh, StockTraderPress.com. I'm sorry about that, Christopher, but it's nice to have you with us. Thanks. Thank All right, you. let's talk about the far-reaching impact. We knew that this storm was going to impact some of the refining and production of oil that takes place in the Gulf. Gas prices expected to go even higher, above $3. Uh, how much of an impact is this going to have nationwide? Oh, it's certainly going to have an effect on uh, oil prices. And oil at 70 to 75 dollars a barrel is going to stifle the economy. Um, over one million barrels a day is not going to come into U.S. through uh, the uh, port of Louisiana, and that's going to hurt. And uh, going forward, the consumer is going to pay it through their wallet. Well, the president is now saying that uh, he may be willing to release some from the uh, emergency reserve. Is that going to help? 
Well, if, if, if oil does come through the reserve, it still has to be refined, and uh, a lot of the refineries are, are closed down. Once the oil comes in, it's got to, it does take time to refine, so that might not really help as much as people think. It's like a Band-Aid.